Hi, welcome to an introduction to Canto RoboFlow. I am Peter van der Poelen, developer of RoboFlow, and with this training movie, I'm going to try to get you started with Canto RoboFlow. The versions we're describing here are uh, for version 9 and 10. Functionalities are very similar. Of course, version 10 has a few more actions uh, available, but basically has the same functionalities. First, we're going to start very quickly with um, what you do after the installations. But the key of this uh, presentation is to um, help you understand what RoboFlow can do for you. So after the installation, RoboFlow should be installed as a service. Uh, RoboFlow runs as a service on Windows or a daemon on Mac or Linux. The user you are running the service with is very important. If RoboFlow uh, needs to have access to the network, to uh, network shares, then a local system, which is the default out-of-the-box installation, is not good enough. You will have to create uh, a domain user with the proper permissions to access all the resources like the network that are necessary. Once you've set that up and restarted RoboFlow, it should run fine. RoboFlow consists actually of two parts. You have uh, Canto RoboFlow being the engine behind the scenes that drives uh, the workflows, but you also have a web interface. The web interface is integrated in the Cumulus Web Solutions. Uh, it's integrated in the web server console. So uh, both services need to be available. Maybe not on the same computer. You can install the Cumulus Web Services wherever you like in the network. They will be talking to one another over a specific, specific port port number 8998. So make sure if it's not installed on the same computer that this port between those two computers is open. To be able to use uh, RoboFlow, you have to log into the web server console. If you log in as Cumulus administrator, you will have full permissions. But if you do that with a normal user, make sure that your user has these two uh, permissions uh, activated, uh, otherwise uh, you will not be allowed to execute or manage RoboFlow workflows. So uh, it's either in your user permissions or in your role permissions that uh, you can set this up. When you go to your uh, server console, your web server console, the IP address is either on the uh, RoboFlow server or on any which server where you install the web solutions. So this is not the IP address of the RoboFlow server here. Here you specify the IP address or DNS name uh, of the web solutions. Then you have to specify here uh, into the server console, which is your Cumulus server, because the server console initially talks to the Cumulus server. So this is the Cumulus server with a username and password very uh, important to keep that uh, in mind. So as you can see, this is the standard uh, web solutions uh, server console. If you uh, want to install this several times in your network, maybe just on the RoboFlow server with only this uh, RoboFlow uh, functionality available, that is also possible. But out of the box, it comes with the complete set of uh, functionalities of the server console. This icon will be visible in the server console always, even if you don't have it installed, but it is only accessible if the user has the proper permissions to work uh, with RoboFlow. If you click on RoboFlow the very first time, it could be that you get this message. By default, I told you that RoboFlow, the web interface, uh, talks to the backend over a specific port. By default, it looks for that uh, 
specific uh, RoboFlow server on the same computer. So if you logged in on localhost, it tries to look for RoboFlow on that localhost server. That is in this case, uh, maybe not uh, the case. It could be that they're on separate computers and then you get uh, this specific message. That's not a problem. All you need to do is click uh, on this uh, yellow uh, message and specify the IP address of your RoboFlow server and then it will connect to RoboFlow. You can even install multiple instances of RoboFlow on the same computer or on different servers but remember that in that case um, it might require some additional uh, installation steps. Uh, if uh, at some point you want to uh, switch between those RoboFlow installations uh, you can do that uh, from the menu item. But let's keep it simple. So we connected to RoboFlow for the first time and here we would get the list of our workflows. Of course at this point uh, since this is the first time we open it there are no workflows so uh, nothing is shown. If the workflows are visible it will show the status of each workflow at that moment. This window is not live. You need to click refresh if you come back five minutes later if you want to see uh, what has happened in the past five minutes. RoboFlow is very similar like to the scheduler. Um, it has different workflows that are executed on a predefined interval or fixed time depending on how it was uh, set up. The first time you come into RoboFlow uh, we always uh, you always need to first set up uh, the cumulus settings for RoboFlow. So when you go into the global parameters you will uh, get this window and you can set up uh, the username and password uh, and the IP address to connect to the Cumulus server. RoboFlow can also automatically email uh, to um, users uh, notifying about, about things that happen in Cumulus or uh, even notifying about the fact that RoboFlow is being restarted or stopped etc. This does not use the Cumulus mail manager of uh, Cumulus itself because it can also notify you about the fact that Cumulus is maybe down or not reachable. If we were to use the Cumulus mail manager then I could not or RoboFlow could not send you a mail that Cumulus is down for instance. So you can set uh, this up and um, in this setup you even have a test button that allows you to test if RoboFlow exists and what we see is that it has automatically populated our catalogs so uh, that means that um, it has access otherwise it would not show up with the list of catalogs and we can even easily do test a query to uh, the catalogs and we see uh, the face that's different uh, files. As I said you can set up an, an email server and I would really encourage you to do that because it's very important. RoboFlow is an application that runs automatically unattended in the background so if something happens, if something goes wrong it's a good thing that it can notify you that something is happening and so uh, it can keep you uh, informed. You can specify one email address or multiple email addresses separated by semicolons. And here too you can test uh, but um, then you have to uh, type in uh, the values. Again, RoboFlow cannot pick them up from your setup. Uh, so uh, if you test, click on test, it will give you the ability to test your credentials. You can scroll down. There's some more parameters in here. You can get uh, notified when RoboFlow starts or when the RoboFlow gets an error or when RoboFlow stops, uh, is stopped. Something I didn't mention with the services of RoboFlow in the beginning, you should have a daily restart of the RoboFlow service or daemon because RoboFlow uses a lot of resources, um, connections to Cumulus, etc. And um, it's a good thing that they are cleaned up, cleared out uh, daily, giving you a fresh start every morning. In the different functionalities within RoboFlow, you can use um, 
cataloging of assets, converting, etc. Those require sometimes permission templates or asset handling sets to be used. Here you can specify the default ones, um, but also in the individual workflows, you will have the opportunity to specify them uh, as well if you uh, want to use a different set. So you can easily select them or type in the value. If you do a select, an asset handling set is bound to um, a catalog. So you select the asset handling set for a catalog and then you can uh, save it. Then there's also uh, the ability to set up which export format Cumulus should, uh, Roboflow should use. Um, you should not change this parameter anymore. This is more backwards compatibility. In the past, there was also a format for Cumulus 5, 6, and 7. Now, version since version 8, it has always been XML. So, um, enough about the initial uh, setup of uh, Roboflow. Now, uh, you are ready to go. The most important thing is that um, Roboflow allows you to create as many workflows uh, as you like. Uh, and if you click uh, on this button, you will get the options of the different kinds of workflows. The key thing about a type of workflow that is offered to you is its starting point. It's the starting point of your workflow. It's the, the decision that you need to take up front. If you are processing newly dropped files in a folder, then this is called a hot folder. And this is one of the options. Another option is process a list of records. You can query into the Cumulus catalogs and get a record, uh, a list of records on which you want to do something. So this typically is called a hot collection workflow, uh, process a list of records. You can do the same with categories. If you want to query uh, the categories, then uh, there is a specific uh, workflow for that as well. The most commonly used workflow is actually synchronous files from folder structure with catalog. This means that you have the ability to uh, monitor, to have Roboflow monitor a folder with its files in it and its subfolders in it, and it will automatically catalog new files, update updated files. It will um, keep a catalog completely in sync with what you have in a folder. You can also synchronize with an FTP website where uh, it synchronizes a local folder to an FTP website. This can be synchronization both ways or it can be just uh, uploading a file, downloading files from and to FTP. And the final one is uh, talking to an SQL database. Uh, Roboflow has the ability to talk to any SQL database that has a JDBC driver. You might have to install it uh, separately, the JDBC driver, but uh, from that point on, Roboflow enables you to interact with maybe your internal SQL databases. Let's start with a hot folder workflow. Um, process newly dropped files in a hot folder. So it's very simple. Um, we will determine how often this workflow has to run and it will look in a folder. Each file that is in this folder will be processed and will be processed. That means in Roboflow that uh, whatever actions you defined, it, defined in the action script, um, it will execute them after each file, the email message is created. So Roboflow has the ability to email uh, information about the process. Um, the interesting about thing about uh, the emailing in Roboflow is that it's a kind of bulk email. Uh, instead of sending you an email in regards to every item it processes, you have an option to not do that and send a bulk mail if you are processing 20 files so it can send you an email about those 20 files one email with the email message bundled together about each file you will see that later this uh, later and after processing all files as i said it will um, bundle this in one mail the most important thing 
uh, to remember is that when a file is processed, the final step of the process for an individual file for a hot folder is to delete it. There is a parameter, an option to disable this, but that is the st st standard functionality of a drop folder, a hot folder. So I clicked on the create button to uh, create a workflow and in my option list I am looking for the list of uh, uh, starting points and my starting point today is a file in a folder so I'm going to process the newly dropped files uh, in the folder. It is very important that you set a unique workflow name because that will be uh, the uh, unique way that RoboFlow will talk to this workflow. So in this example I'm <clears throat> saying hot folder catalog new files and process newly dropped files in a hot folder is uh, that the type of workflow that I selected. I click OK and <clears throat> this is uh, my workflow screen. And the general screen of the workflow gives me information about the name that I typed in, which I can change at any point. The workflow type, as I said, this is called a hot folder template workflow. And then the interval, the next flow, the logging, the help and the comment. There are also here at the top different tabs. Um, that means that the general tab is this, then you have the parameters. And then depending on the type of workflow, you can have one or more action scripts. The action script is what you create yourself. And that is the base uh, functionality of uh, the workflow. <clears throat> so we will see the interval in the next uh, slide. But the interval is how often the workflow runs. You can also cascade workflows. You can say, the next workflow is that one. For instance, if I am importing files in the next workflow, I could do something with the records, etc. etc. By default, uh, logging is enabled. You can also set it to debug log, but that is only necessary in case you encounter a problem. If I look here in my drop down, I see I have many options. If the workflow interval is set to zero, it's not going to run. It's not going to be executed. Um, <clears throat> the interval actually means the time it sleeps between two workflows. When RoboFlow starts, the, is started, the service or the daemon, the basic functionality is that it will launch the workflow. So, Whatever interval you are setting, the key thing is when RoboFlow starts, it will execute all the workflows. Except if you prefix it with an exclamation mark. If you prefix it with an exclamation mark, it will not immediately start. It will first go into sleep mode. It will first go to sleep. So if I set it here to 30 seconds, it means it sleeps 30 seconds between the execution of two work, two uh, of these two workflows of the same workflow over and over again. So that's uh, one way of uh, specifying it. Uh, another way of specifying it is with a fixed moment in time. So you can say I want to execute this workflow at 6 a.m. Then uh, 6 a.m. means that it will run whenever RoboFlow is restarted at night and at 6 a.m. If I only want 6 a.m., I have to specify an exclamation mark in front of it. And the same is for multiple moments in time. So <clears throat> you can also, if you are running it on an interval, um, you can also say, when does it need stop executing? So here, for instance, 600 exclamation mark 2100 means that it will run. Uh, and sleep then 600 seconds, 10 minutes, and it will run again, sleep 10 minutes, run again, sleep 10 minutes, etc., etc., until um, it finally uh, stops at 9 p.m. In, at night. So that is another possibility. You can add as many 
comment to the interval as you like, as long as you type a space after uh, whatever uh, interval you want, then you can type in whatever text uh, you want. You can add comment uh, on your interval. You can also specify a day in the week or a day of the month. Day of the week, D1, is day one of the week. Um, that means it will run the first day of the month. If you are in Europe, the first day of the month is a Monday. If you are in the US, the first day of the month is Sunday. Uh, this has to do with the standard day of the month functionality of Java. M1 is the first day of the, sorry, day, day one is day of the week, not day of the month. M1 is day of the month. And so M1 is first day of the month. And um, M31 is the last day of the month. So even if the month only has 28 days, then still specifying M31, it will run on the last day of the month. And so that is an additional way of specifying it. Then if you have workflows that you only want to run once, maybe at, uh, in the morning when RoboFlow is restarted, um, then you can specify minus one. If you want a workflow to be run on demand, um, then you specify minus two. Run on demand means that you will come to the interface and say start and then it just executes once or it can be called from another workflow with the next workflow feature that I showed you in the previous uh, slide. There is a very special parameter only for watch folders, uh, which is minus three or exclamation mark minus three. Um, that means that um, it listens to file events. I will explain this when we come to the watch folder workflow in the next movie. Then when we've set up the general parameters, uh, we can come to, sorry, the general uh, settings, we can come to the parameters. As the starting point of a hot folder workflow is a folder, we can set up, uh, of course, the folder to watch. We also have the ability to uh, set up file filters and folder filters, which means by default filtering out what I don't want. If you specify the file extensions here, they don't will not be executed. If you prefix them with an exclamation mark, they will be executed and only those will be executed. Um, it means uh, that in this uh, particular uh, file filter, you, you have the opportunity to uh, only process certain files. You can even use regular expressions, um, but that is for another training movie. Same for the folder filter. The folder filter um, <clears throat> gives you the opportunity to filter out folders. That too will be explained in another uh, training movie. And then uh, you can also delete uh, empty folders. If people are dropping in files in folders, once the files are processed, by default, the folders stay there. So you can delete them if you want with this functionality. You can also do a weight folder stable. If certain files that belong together in a folder should only be processed when all files from that folder are there, a copy process maybe over FTP or whatever could be slow. So you could say that it has to wait for folder stable, but that is something very rarely used. And then you have the notify email. The notify email, as I said, is a very important functionality that uh, will allow you to uh, notify people about uh, files have, that have been processed by this workflow. As I said, I'm going to uh, set up here a folder. I can select it. I can type it in. Uh, I can create new folders if I want. This is uh, how you set up a folder. And please take uh, a moment to read the more detailed uh, information about uh, all these parameters, um, <clears throat> they are, um, I am uh, not going to explain them in too much detail in this uh, training movie, 
but uh, you can have get also help on uh, the functionalities of uh, the available actions in uh, RoboFlow or help on the specific workflow. What does this specific workflow do? As I said, I can specify several email uh, messages, uh, notifications, um, <clears throat> uh, separate, separate them by semicolons and uh, that uh, is how you can uh, specify email. You can configure an email message. An email message is, consists actually of three parts. You have the subject of the mail, you have the body of the mail, and then you have the real mail. What is that? Well, the subject is the subject. The body of the mail, as you can see, is HTML and contains this special tag. This special tag um, is actually what is repeated for every individual item that is processed. So if for every file that is processed, you wanna pick up the file name, br slash here means uh, carriage return in HTML. So you are here specifying that you want the file name and another file uh, name and etc. for each individual file. So you can uh, create whatever layout of the email uh, you want in here. Important is to keep this tag in your body because otherwise it will never uh, insert this when all files have been processed in a certain loop. Please remember you are working in a website. Um, so uh, if you are making a lot of changes, s click on the save button from time to time uh, so that you don't uh, lose any of your um, settings. This uh, means that your RoboFlow interface is talking to the backend. So this can take a few moments and then uh, your screen will show up like this. Now we have set up our workflow, but we haven't added any special functionality. So uh, if uh, this workflow, if we click on start um, and if we prepare uh, in the folder of RoboFlow where it's watching a file, then uh, the functionality that will happen is this workflow will run. You can see it in its status and when it's finished you will see a last run here and the status will go back to on demand because this workflow for, was specified to be on demand. And then an email will have been sent out to me saying okay I processed a file called roboflowprocessing.png. So that's the different parts that you specified in your uh, mail configuration. And finally, you will see that the file is gone. So basically, now RoboFlow has done nothing else than sent an email about this file and finally deleted it. So at this point, um, this is not uh, very much. You can always go and have a look of what the workflow has done and uh, what you can see in this example is that, for instance, my email was not uh, reachable, so uh, it sent it uh, logged in the logging that there was an error about sending uh, the email. You can access all the log files for 20 days. And so in the drop down, you can choose the workflow, the log that you want for a specific workflow. Uh, the advantage of this is that if you get an email during the weekend, when you go back to the office on Monday, you can still get to that specific mail. This screen is live. So if you keep it open, it will refresh every 60 seconds. If you want it more quickly, you can click on refresh. You can always, always check what the latest version of RoboFlow was by clicking on here and it gives you also a detailed list of information about what changes has been, have been done in uh, RoboFlow recently. We've come to the end of uh, our first uh, part of the training movie. Um, check out on YouTube uh, part two for more detailed information on the workflows. Thank you for joining.